Hey, how's it going? It's me, Gavin CMD. Today I'm delaying the stream a bit because I actually wanted to do something quite a bit different. Today we're starting a new series called Grow With Me Box Fight Tutorials and Tips. Now let me state this quickly. Obviously, I'm not Clicks, Unknown, or Zane Season. I'm just like one of you. I've been dipping my toes into competitive Fortnite for a few months now, and even you can watch my personal growth every day at twitch.tv slash GavinZMD. I personally never benefited from watching pro tutorials, despite me aspiring to become one eventually. Sure, I pick up a few tips and tricks along the way, but I never feel like I truly benefit. So, that's pretty much the point in what makes this different. I'm just like one of you, so hopefully it will be easier for both of us to understand. I'm not the greatest, but the odds are, if you're watching this, neither are you. So, without said, come on and grow with me. So, we all know at this point, box fighting is the meta right now. And it will be for the unforeseen future of Fortnite. So, if you haven't learned much about it yet, you're probably already at a huge disadvantage. Some people would even go as far as, as to say that if you learn basic box fighting, you can win almost half your box fights. So anyway, let's break down box fighting. And by box fighting, I mean a 1v1, a 2v2, a 3v3, wager style. But here's the thing, I'm not planning to do this how most people would. I'm actually going to directly compare box fighting to a little game you may know. This game being the game of chess. So everyone knows the strategic board game known as chess. It's one of the most competitive games out there. And one can even go as far as saying uh, the first eSport. It really depends on how you define eSport. Uh, now I have a friend that plays the game competitively. You guys may hear him on stream every so often. I'm not going to out him right now. Um, he often tells me tips and tricks for the game so I can get better at it even though whenever we 1v1 or face off on chess.com he puts me in checkmate in 15 moves or less it's more likely less i don't even know every single time i soon realized that some of his tips and tricks could actually translate to the game of fortnite and even more in box fights so let us use these tips and tricks to help us understand box fights more so the first tip is peace control. Now this seems very basic, but you need to have a good understanding of what piece to place and why you put it there. In chess, you have 16 pieces on an 8x8 grid. Knowing what to do with them and why you're doing it is a huge part of the game. So back to Fortnite terms. You have four different types of building pieces that can go on any tile, yada yada yada. The first thing you need to understand is why you placed what you placed. Let's say you place a cone piece in a box and then quickly expand to the next island box up there. Try to think to yourself, why did I place that cone? Why not stare? Can I get a good angle off of this? Can I use it as a peak later? This might seem like a lot to think about right now. Yeah, maybe, but it's all important and eventually you'll automatically think about these things and it will turn into a habit or basic muscle memory. By the way, by now we should all know that cones are typically the way to go. They can be flipped, edited to our advantage, um, way quicker than stairs. Uh, even I'm resetting some muscle memory back from using stairs, but we'll get more in-depth about strategies in later episodes. Today I'm just going over the fundamentals and getting the basic fundamentals down. So with that being said, the next thing you need to know from chess. Ask anyone in chess, and they'll tell you the best place to control is without a doubt center board. Given why e4 or double king's pawn opening is the most common first move in chess. And for good reason too, it immediately stakes a claim on center. Center board is so important because of the ability to limit where the opponent goes as well as reduce basic travel time. So back into Fortnite terms. Let's say I have a whole center of the board cleared, and unless the enemy is on the same page, which can happen, but they'll have to attempt to claim one of my walls in order to expand. So we're already at a clear advantage. Now let us say that the enemy is on the far left of the board, which by the way is the worst opening in chess. Uh, we know that 
We're always about two to five tiles, tiles away from them at all times. This is great because if we started on, let's say, the far right, the complete opposite, we would have to expand at least four to eight tiles to get to that side, which opens up the risk of a balloon battle. Insert mongrel screaming. So just by starting in center board, we're already putting ourselves into a great situation. Uh, we put ourselves in a great start to controlling and forcing the enemy into a certain play, which puts us in the driver's seat, which is something you always want to do. Now, this next step is what makes chess so hard. And so it separates the amateurs from the semis, the semis from the pros, and the pros from Bobby Fischer. It's the art of all knowing. By this, it simply means that we have a response to every possible play from our enemy. A great chess player who have thought about up to seven to eight moves ahead and already has a counterplay for every single outcome. Knowing what players might do and knowing how to counter it is so important. But luckily in Fortnite, there's way less possible outcomes, so it's way less RNG uh, than chess just because of the art of predictability. You know, as bad as those things are, at least they're predictable. The normal people would scare me. You of all people should understand that. The infected are bad, but at least they're predictable. It's the normal people that scare me. Bill off of The Last of Us. I bring up that quote because in the means of Fortnite box fights, we can push the other player to do things, we can force plays that minimize RNG, and we can make them more predictable. Using the two other strategies, which at this point I know are basic fundamentals, we can effectively put ourselves in the driver's seat and pretty much on the right path to forcing the enemy to do what we want. Now I know this video is kind of vague, but I wanted to teach some basic fundamentals about box fighting and relate them to another game. Of course, in later episodes, we'll go way deeper into actual tips and tricks and what we can use to dominate over the other player. But today was just an understanding video. Like I said, a basic fundamentals-esque type video. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. But please do not if you genuinely didn't like it or it didn't help you. Because then I have no other signs to help me know what I did wrong. But if you did find this video enjoyable or helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, all that good jazz. But more importantly, follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash GavinCMD, G-A-V-I-N-C-M-D. And watch my competitive growth happen live. Thanks for watching and I can't wait for you all to grow with me.